Hi everyone, my name is Elfie and I'm a teacher here in Singapore. Today's video is about how to conduct breakout rooms in Google Meet. Um, I know Zoom already has this feature, but some of us are more familiar with uh, Google Meet and Google will probably roll out a feature soon anyways. But for now, this is a workaround so that we can still conduct small group discussions in Google Meet. Um, the aim is actually to be in all rooms at the same time so that you can listen into the conversations, monitor and provide feedback uh, without being confused as to which room you are in. Um, the trick here is to enable a mute feature in the Chrome browser, which I'll explain in a little while. Um, but first, these are the things that I will go through today. Number one will be logistics of setting it all up. Number two will be the protocol of going in and out of the rooms. Number three will be possible Google tools for collaborative work. And finally, the all important muting the individual rooms. I'll also share some snippets of my lessons so you can actually see how it all plays out. So let's begin, shall we? Shall we? Yes. So let's begin with setting it all up. First, create a set of Google Slides that we'll be using during the lesson. And by sharing it with your class, it also becomes a possible platform for group work to be done. Give your class instructions and set aside a few slides for individual groups to work on. Next is to create an event in Google Calendar, where you also create a Google Meet link. Doing so in the calendar is just more secure as it is scheduled rather than creating one from the website. Now here is where you also create the other rooms. I would typically name them Group 1, Group 2 and so on. Now remember earlier I was talking about the instructions given for your students? Now, once you have created the link, Copy it and add it to the slide. Do so for the other groups and just place the link to the main room as well. Here is a video of me giving instructions for the students to go to the breakout rooms. Okay, first we'll have a short quiz to recall our understanding on topic sentences. And then there'll be some individual work, right? You will be going through uh, the slides and your, your first task is actually to just comment on the first TS on the slide on how that particular TS can be improved, all right? Then we're going to break up into our groups. Then I'm going to invite you to a link. And then you just hang around there for 20 minutes to work on two topic sentences. And then after that, we're going to have a short break. And then you need to come back to the main room, which is here. And then we're going to have a class discussion. So this will be our meeting rooms. All right, I'll show it to you again. Um, in this, so this is our main meeting room. So whenever you get lost, you can just come back here, okay? But these are your breakout rooms. All right, later, later, don't go in yet. Now, before the lesson starts, I recommend that you join the breakout rooms first. This is so that you'll be the host of these rooms and you can record the sessions if you like. So once the students have entered these rooms, you can begin to record the sessions just in case anyone wants to be cheeky. Inform them that the session is being recorded so they know they're always being watched. Now that you have set it all up, let's talk about collaborative tools. I've used various tools such as Google Docs, Google Slides, and even Jamboard. Now this video is how the students are using Google Slides to work on an editing exercise on topic sentences. <laughs> Let's look on it. I wanted to say, uh, like, any media that, like, this will be our next alternative. Okay, then let's start with the first one. Uh, how do we directly address the question for the first one? Social media has a positive effect on... Society. No, is it society or is it more of the school? Yeah, kind of more of the school. Yeah. So, there's a positive impact on as it serves as an alternative platform. for students and teachers to engage in lessons from home. I think. I can say uh, supplementing, yeah, supplementing students' learning beyond the confines of the classroom. 
Yeah. Mm, you, yes, can yes. Say, you can say that the lessons are being more interesting because of social media. Yeah. I think Shanti can write her one first. Next is a video on Jamboard, where I'm going through parts of an essay outline where I'm asking students how to help me identify certain elements of it. This is about engaging them and keeping them on their toes So, because I might just call out anyone. Let's take a look. Let me see who I will select. Okay, uh, Dylan, can you take the yes. brush and then highlight to me the content keyword? Because there are three things that we need to remember how to do question analysis. The first is content keyword. Highlight. Uh, use the brush. Okay, so social media is the content keyword. One, Why okay, so uh, modern world is the context keyword. So social media is the content. And Dylan actually highlighted, uh, Dylan, can you highlight the modern world in a different color? So Dylan has highlighted two. One is content and one is context. All right, so you must understand that when you put their content, when you brainstorm this, right, you need to address the core ideas. All right, so these are the issues that come with social media. All right, this information, misinformation, tool for power, empowerment, and tool for the government to control, and also the reverse to also re uh, raise awareness and all that. Obviously, last is the ATQ word. Right, obviously, uh, uh, can uh, Amiro, can you just highlight where is the ATQ word? It's very obvious. Yes, sir. Okay. Get my highlighter. Uh, I... Brush, brush, brush. Brush. Hmm. Cepat lah. Done, 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 done. Oh, I'm lagging, highlighting lagging. it. Let, oh yeah. no, Amirul, Amirul, Amirul. No, my dear boy. Wait. That is not the ATQ oh, word. Oh, 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 bring, 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 bring. Wait, I, 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 wait, wait, wait. All let, right, so let me redeem myself. Okay, redeem yourself. You all know what is the ATQ word, right? Yes, yes, so, yes. So what is what does this mean, right? Okay, so when you think of the word threat, which Amiru is highlighting, is brushing, uh, brushing over now, right? The word threat here needs to be unpacked, okay? So we know we have three question type. We have absolute, we have um, extent, and then we have comparison, all right? Now, I want you to just Tick next to your choice of question type. What do you think this question type is? All right, everyone, please indicate on the side which question type is this. It could be absolute, it could be extend, is it ex is it comparison? Okay, one tick is enough, guys. <clears throat> no, not a circle, okay. Okay, so many of us, okay, okay, stop, stop, stop. Many of us, okay, so I can see the response really. Put your mouse down. Five, four. Three, two, one, down. Okay, thank you. Um, many of us indicate absolute. And I'm guessing the reason why you say absolute is because of this word, threat. Which you, I don't fault you for thinking that, all right? But if I want to make this an absolute question, I must make it absolute there is there is no word in the claim that makes it an absolute claim the claim must sound absolute there is none there that makes it an absolute question how do i make it an absolute question when i say social media is a threat so i need to describe it as being the only threat so i can highlight that to make it absolute i say social media is the only threat in the modern world. That makes it quite absolute, quite extreme claim. So the reason why you're thinking of is an absolute statement is because of the word threat. It sounds extreme, but that's describing the impact of social media. That's not describing the claim. The claim must sound absolute, okay? The claim must sound absolute. So I'm gonna move on to a couple of introductions. Remember that the issue earlier we talked about was your lack of engagement with the keywords and also highlighting the extent of it. Between these two introductions, 
and everybody else take the next 30 seconds to also think which one do you think is more appropriate for the question between these two introductions uh Jivitesh and ragu Jivitesh and ragu can you just indicate with a tick which introduction do you prefer okay so we have separate points of views all right uh i assume ragu you chose the top one right uh, what are your reasons for your preference? Indicate in the chat. Ragu says the last line in the second intro contradicts. Okay, so I'm going to highlight the words that doesn't make it contradict. Okay, so there are a couple of words here. There's this 70-30% going on here. All right, with the word 70% is and then small 30. So by using that, though, though the phrasing can be improved, right? By using that, you are not contradicting your point. All right. In fact, it makes it balanced. Now, finally, for the all important mute function, it is an extension called mute tab, which you can download from the Chrome web store. I hate to disappoint you, but if you're a teacher here in Singapore and using the school laptop, you can't use it for now as it has not been whitelisted. Hopefully it's just a matter of time. So if you add this extension to your browser, you will see it at the top right corner here. So at any time you want to mute a particular room, you just hit this and it will be quiet. And so that's the end of the video. Hope you find all these tips useful and till we meet again.